Hello and welcome to my latest video. So we've got another batch of vintage penguin books to go through today that need uh, cleaning and uh, making good as best I possibly can. Um, now I've not gone mad, I've probably got about 60 to 70 books to go through so we should easily be able to get this done in um, you know, an hour or so. I would think maybe a little bit more, just see how it goes, see how much work they need doing. So I do hope you've uh, been well and uh, thanks for popping in. Oh, I've got the dust wrapper flaps. Thanks for popping in to uh, see me clean this latest batch of books. This is number 61 here. This was actually a reissue because the uh, penguin number five was this one and it got withdrawn. And I see it has actually got a name there, but I think that must be in pen, but we'll give it a See if we can rub any of it out. This is the uh, the 1940 edition. I'll give this one a little rub out. I don't have a funny feeling that this is actually very light pen, which I'm not going to be able to do anything with. This is quite a valuable book, so I'm being super careful. Well, it is fading a little bit, actually. Yeah, it is actually fading. Maybe... Uh, this soft rubber on this 1940 paper from 80 years ago is just enough to uh, lighten it. It's not going to go completely by the look of it, but it's going to look a little bit better than what it was. So sorry, Gladys, which I think her name was. <laughs> yeah, on these old, old books, you have to be so careful because one false move and you've uh, ripped the cover and that's the last thing we want to do that's okay that'd be all right sixty two then the missing money lender these crime ones are absolutely gorgeous quite collectible as you can imagine they're expensive books and uh, nothing to do with that one and they're always worth seeing or picking up if you see them you know um, this is great the raffles and uh, there's another raffles book later he was like the gentleman burglar basically um, really really good fun the, the raffles stories um, the BBC adapted them oh look at this look my parents went to raffles back in the 80s and they brought me back a uh, a raffles um, bookmark I think it was the 80s or 90s and I popped it in my copy of raffles <laughs> which is actually fine so I'm pleased with that um, so I think what we do since though none of those need anything however the tops are um, extremely dusty and dirty there you can see these have never ever been done I've cleaned the insides but I never used to bother with the top edges so I'll split this little lot into two and uh, I've started, rather than using my toothbrush per se, um, I've found I've had better success with this one, which is like a, um, a sh you know, for polishing shoes, really. Once you put the polish on with a, a different brush to this, then you buff your shoes with this brush. And this is the one I'm using. Get them out of the way a minute. Definitely lightens them, doesn't it? Yeah, very nice. And uh, we'll store these over this side, I think, this time as we go through them. Certain books really uh, haven't been stored in the best of environments and they've ended up getting super dusty, but that's fine. That's why I'm going through these, to get these books 
looking absolutely as good as possible. Which they will do once I've uh, finished going through them. Debris already on the desk here. Gawalis the Four, Just Men. These really are great books. These would have all originally come in dust wrappers and sadly my copies don't have them, but that's okay. I'm just uh, glad to have them. Another crime one here, Man in the Dark. John Ferguson. And I think the thing is with these um, crime titles, you can sort of spot them a mile away, can't you? This is great. This is a travel and adventure, The Surgeon's Log. That was also the name of a uh, Patrick O'Brien, Jack Aubrey novel later on. I wonder if he borrowed it off that. That's a good title there, The Surgeon's Log. Another little batch of travel here. So my South Sea Island. These travel ones are in the Cerise covers. And there are collectors who just collect these travel and adventure ones. And they are very, very distinctive and they look great. It's funny, I always put my, sh my penguins on the shelf in... Um, in numerical order. So you see they're all numbered there, you know, 60, 64, 65, 66, 67. This is number 68. So they're all in numerical order, but some people put them in series order. So they group all their crime together, all their Cerise ones here, their travel ones, and uh, their fiction all together. And I suppose it's not a bad idea, but I much prefer them in, uh, in order. So this little batch I'm going to give these the dust off. So as I film this, fingers crossed, tomorrow I'm going to be uh, getting my new studio built in the garden. It'll be just stage one because it's not something that once it's building's up, it's ready to then go and film. Um, it has to be insulated then soundproofed and we have to get the power in there. So all of that's going to take time, but I'm hoping that I will have the studio up and running and working for next year, for January. That is my aim. And if that can be done, fantastic. And hopefully I'll be able to make better quality videos, which is what I'm looking to do. I'll be able to mount a couple of like B-roll cameras, so you can I can sort of mix the videos up a little bit. But I know that, I don't know how important that would be to my viewers, just let me know. But um, I know lots of people, they just listen to these videos rather than actually watch them. Now, this is interesting because number 69, I've got number 70 as well. These were a pair, so this is book one and book two, but book Book two is as it is. Book one is still in its original dust wrapper. So I'm going to carefully take this dust wrapper off. And when I sort of feel it underneath, you can, obviously it's minto, but you can sort of like feel where there's been a layer of dust in between the dust wrapper and the book cover. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give my cloth a, a going over this because Apart from that, this copy here is uh, pretty darn immaculate when you think how old it is. Let's have a look at this. 1936. Look at the state of it. Minto. If only they were all like that, eh? <laughs> that is beautiful, isn't it? It's never been read. The wrapper is not perfect, but even so, the wrapper has done its job and saved the book from any sort of damage. So... This has been in someone's library for many years, hasn't it? And uh, I don't remember where I got this particular one. But whoever bought it never got around to reading it. It's lovely, isn't it? Now, because that one's in a wrapper, I think I'm going to ever so carefully get the old toothbrush on it. Just on that top edge there. Rather than attack it with the shoe brush. There we are. That's really the only signs of uh, 
any sort of aging on it at all, isn't it? And even then, it's very, very light. Nothing to really worry about. There we are. Number 70, however, is not in a wrapper. So we don't need to be quite as careful with this one. So we'll leave that one as is. Now we've got our first blue book today, which is the biography titles. Confessions and Impressions. Ethel Manning. I have to say, the early, um, this one's got a few turned over corners. These early titles in the biography, they've never really interested me. Um, Penguin published some great bog um, biographies and a couple of autobiographies in the 1960s and 50s, which I think are great. I've really enjoyed. But these really early ones, it's for people I'm just not that fussed about. And uh, for that reason, I'm not um, that interested in them. But even so, if you collect a publisher by the number, you need them all really, don't you, you know? 72 here and you see on the back there penguin were really good so they they gave you the complete list of all the titles at this point there was the first 80 and they would release 10 new books each month so you had to really stay on top of it didn't you if you were collecting them all um there were people who did collect them all and uh there's a, I've got a couple of books in my Penguin collection, and it was uh, from a guy called um, Harry Arnott, I think his name was. And he worked for Penguin. He was a Penguin warehouse man right back from the very beginning uh, when Penguin started. And he kept a copy of every single vintage Penguin in his own collection. And uh, that particular collection got auctioned um, in the late 80s, early 90s. And I was able to pick up a few books from that collection. And they're quite special because they've all got his name inside. He wrote inside in pencil. So that's one little bit of um, rubbing out that I've left. You know, I've left his name inside because they're really nice. These aren't bad. I didn't get any of the really early ones, but I got some of the, some of the slightly like 40s ones and 50s ones. So this one's suffering from a bit of, you know, foxing there and page edge browning. There's not really a lot I can do about that. Um, it's just aged, basically. And sadly, that is just what happens with books, isn't it? You know, they just age. It's got a couple of turned over corners, so those I can sort out. But this is absolutely, um, you know readable and i'm certainly not going to be fussed about getting another copy if one comes my way obviously i'll um you know compare it with what i've got and uh, potentially look you know keep the better one but beyond that because i collect lots of other things as well i'm not obsessing over the condition of um some of my books you know if it's a really bad one it will go on my upgrade list but something like that I'm more than happy to keep that in that condition, you know. Even without a wrapper, it's absolutely fine. It's just a little aged and brittle, that one. So let's give these a bit of a wipe down. The tops there are really dirty, aren't they? But we'll do the bottom edges first. They never need much, do they? Looking at that one, that might need a bit of glue in. So we're going to have a look at number 73 in a sec. So the new channel, this channel that you're watching now, is still growing. It's very early days, of course. I've only done yeah, just over half a dozen videos, so it's hardly uh, had time to run yet. But I'm very encouraged with the way it's uh, taking off of 300 and something, 317, I think, subscribers at the moment. So it's on its way. Um, these things take time to build an audience, and I'm totally aware of that. Let's have a look at number 73 here. So what I'm looking at here is this. It's um, just where it's uh, sort of come away. 
what I'm going to do is um, squid a bit of a uh, Prit stick in there and then squat it down to just re glue that little bit of um, spine there. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy about how the uh, how the new channel is going. Um, certainly people are spending people who found it have spent a lot of time on the channel going through the content. So that's good. My watch time is through the roof. Um, what I don't have many of is at the moment, I, I do need some more subscribers to sort of get a little bit of momentum uh, with YouTube. So that's really what I'm after. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it would be cool if you could. And I would like someone to sort of share these videos, this playlist on um, Reddit, on one of the uh, Unintentional ASMR Reddit pages. That would be fantastic if you could. There we are. Lovely. So I should just be able to squish that down now, like so. Hopefully it's going to stay in there. Give it another 30 seconds. Yeah, there we are. It's just to stop it getting caught and things like that. You do find this with old books. It's not really any real way around it. It's just going to happen, you know. So that is stack number one. And I've got three stacks for us to do today. So they didn't take a lot, really. They weren't too bad at all. Here's a lovely one then. Evelyn Wall, Decline and Fall. Now it's got a bit of toning along the top there. You can sort of see where something's been over it like that. But unfortunately, there's nothing I can actually do about that. Um, not with this, but it's not like a later book, which I can just bring the polish to. The, none of these can be polished because they're matte. They're not shiny covers like some of the stuff we've seen from the 50s. These are much older. Um, in some cases, in fact, all of these are um, over 80 years old. All of the books that we're seeing today are over 80 years old. So that's worth bearing in mind, you know. If I was to take polish to these, it would just wreck them. The next one I've got coming up is in a wrapper, so that's why I'm just doing these two as is. Lots of dust off just two little books there. had a little bit of vintage repair on it already by the look of it it wasn't done by me but sometimes these books get repaired in antiquity as it were you know uh, back in the day certainly these pre-war books would have been um, nursed through the war in some cases so that they could have been read a bit more widely so this is a, a lovely um, lilac covered one they didn't do many of these and I think it's a fantastic cover for uh, vintage books. It's been in a dust wrapper, this one. So it's in uh, remarkable condition. A little bit of foxing again, but nothing to really worry about. Absolute beauty, isn't it? Very, very nice indeed. 1937 we're looking at now. Came in a wrapper, which isn't bad. And it feels nice and clean, that. Like there isn't like a layer, little layer of dust on it like some wrapper books can be. And I suppose if I was really fussy, I could theoretically um, protect all the dust wrappers as well while we do it, but I think that's a bit OTT for paperbacks. If I'm gonna do anything, I'm just gonna pop it into a, a comic stroke paperback bag, which I have done with some of my very, very rarest wartime ones. And I'll put a little link to that down below there. There we are. That's Grey Wolf. Oh, on to a couple more crimes now. This is number 70. This is actually quite a common one, but my copy is not particularly that nice. So um, this is the sort of book, these, this particular crime, but for some reason turns up all the time. So um, I'll probably be able to upgrade this one at some point. 
So it's probably one of the, I think it was one of the very earliest crime titles that I've got. And it's funny, you just, you know, you never go back to it. You just assume you've got it. And then when you get it out, you, you know, after many years, which is what this is, you think, oh, that's not actually that good a copy. <laughs> There's another little one here, the RAS. I'm just checking this spine. Yeah, it's all right. It's not going to come away. Okay, lovely. The dawn of reckoning. Yeah, lovely. Here's a bit of a classic, Tark of the Otter, Henry Williamson. Pretty nice copy of this one. Once again, sadly not in a dust wrapper, but um, I have got um, a big bag of vintage dust wrappers upstairs, sort of in my collection, but they're, um, they are in a sorry old state and I need to sort of sort them out really. But the books look a lot better when they're not in the wrapper, so just a little bit of, I'm not sure what it was on the top there, but that's okay. So let's give these four a brush. So I've had a few comments lately about the videos and if you'd like to chime in, even if it's just to say you're loving the content and could you do this or could you do that, I'd be really interested to know what you'd like to see me do a bit more of. Um, I am helping the content along by every other week doing a video, as I said, from the archive from my other channel, but I have taken all like, the bells and whistles out so it's much more relaxing. Um, but those videos aren't exactly setting the world on fire, probably because it's not original content and people interested in this sort of stuff have probably seen it before. But for the time being, because I've only really got time to produce one brand new video every couple of weeks, um, I'm going to have to just keep mine in my back catalogue for the time being. Um, but once I get the studio built, I'll have a lot more opportunity to produce hopefully an original video every single week, which would be brilliant um, when I get to that. And that's the ultimate aim, is to do one of these, another hundred or so books from the collection every single week. Plus I'm forever getting new stuff. So um, I have recently got for my birthday, um, a 10 volume set of um, the uh, Second World War Illustrated. And uh, it was like a mail order set, and they're all in their original mailer boxes, if you can believe it. Now, the boxes are quite tatty. That one's in a wrapper, so I'll give this one. The boxes are quite tatty. But the books inside have been quite well protected. They just need a little sort of gentle clean, and then they're ready to go. And they are fascinating. So it's the sort of thing I might, if you want, I could always just do them on this channel. You know, I could just clean that original content on here because it's going to take me a good hour so I might do that actually be a bit of a change from paperbacks wouldn't it look at the tops of there look at that that's almost if you can sort of see it's um it's like it's like a little bit blotchy even in fact isn't it so I wonder just how good those top edges are now going to come up Okay, I feel I can get a bit more control with the toothbrush, to be honest. Well, what do you think? Certainly better. Um, I'm a little concerned about that top edge there. You see how that's sort of... It's that classic case again where the spine is um, just starting to come away from this ancient binding. And I can't help but feel if I wedge a bit of glue in there, I could probably just push that back. It's not 
bad, but it, I just can't leave it. So I'm just going to put a little blob of glue in just to see if that um, will make a bit of a difference. It's not going to hurt to put a little wedge in here. Because it's just been sort of caught on that top edge there. And I would hate for it to get any worse. And I suppose this is why people bag their books. They bag everything, don't they? Because little instances where this might have got knocked or pulled off the shelf at the top of the spine, that's how it's ultimately ended up getting a little bit damaged. But that's okay. That's a nice little couple of blobs of glue in there. So if I squeeze this in, it should be enough. I'll take the excess off the top should be enough to keep this one in place. Yep, there we are. That's a bit better, isn't it? Get rid of that bit of glue. So uh, 83 was in a dust wrapper, so This one's going to be, uh, now this was one that I used to have a really, really tatty copy of, and I actually upgraded it uh, when uh, when one came along in a, in a wrapper. So I was really pleased to get a nice, nice because mine was awful. But this one's got that, that slight dusty feeling. It's really weird to describe, but you do find it with books that have been in a dust wrapper for a while. In this case, 80 years. <laughs> It's a nice copy of this one. For the time, just look at the quality of the print. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? Really, they're so well made, these pre-war penguins. They're just amazing. Later on, and it won't be that long really, when we get to the, uh, the wartime issues, it's a completely different kettle of fish. This is an absolute holiday compared to the, uh, the scarce wartime issues that we've got to come. And, uh, those ones are, are on the horizon. And uh, as soon as it goes into about 1940, the quality of these books massively deteriorates due to paper rationing. And we got some real, real difficult cleaning jobs on our hands, you know, and repair jobs more than anything. But I like a challenge. This one had a particularly dark edge, a dark top edge. That has lightened it slightly. There we are, number 84. So there are people out there who just collect the first 100 vintage Penguin books in first edition. And that's not a bad target, is it, you know? Um, however, just a couple of them are, you know, the very early ones, like the, um, the Agatha Christie's and that, they're the ones that are going to cause you a bit of anguish. I mean, they are out there, but they're expensive when they turn up and uh, they don't seem to turn up often enough. I think that's part of the problem. 86, these charming people. And they're still managing, well, they've got the first, yeah, they've got the first 90 on the back. That's pretty good, isn't it? Penguin were the absolute masters of uh, blowing their own trumpet. Now this one's been in the wars a little bit, so this is gonna need that bottom of the spine regluing. A little tempe there so let's get that out this one's obviously not been through quality control but that's all right that's why we're doing this so that's that tempe out from the inside back cover let's see if there's any more in here it's just a slightly grubby copy really you know compared to some of the gorgeous ones that we've seen today okay so 
This one's definitely going to need a bit of work on the spine there. Quite a nice wedge of glue required. It's probably been glued at some point by a previous owner, but I've never done it. So I'm going to be fairly generous here with the screwdriver and smear a bit in right to the back. Like so. But that has only done a bit of it. We need another, another wedge. Like so. Lovely, that's pretty comprehensive. So let's squish this bit down and hopefully that's going to just keep that, that bit from getting any worse because it was probably in a sorry old state, wasn't it? You know, I mean, it really was that. To me, that looks a lot, lot better than it did and uh, less liable to get into trouble. Now, looking at these again, number 85, that top edge there is a similar sort of situation. So, but it's also, as well as going underneath like that, it's also got this little layer here in the corner. So I'm gonna try and just use this tiny little fleck of glue I've got left there to sort that corner bit out like so. Yep, yeah, that's done that. And now we can just push some more glue under there. So I'm gonna be, once again, fairly generous with the blob of, blob of Pritt stick here because I think it does need it. There we are, squidge it in, swirl it around. I'm gonna put another load in, because these particular spines, they're not flat, they're like bundles of paper. You can sort of see the different groups of like 30 pages and uh, it's not a smooth surface so the glue actually has to sort of go in between those grooves as well and that is a, a gentle art <laughs> in itself but i think we've i think we've just about got it so we're ready for squish time let's give this a got a bit of glue on the top there but that'll come off in a minute so Oh yeah, that's really keeping that down now. That's good. And I said, one of the good things about Pritt Stick is um, it's really flexible, so you can just sort of wipe off any bits that you don't need, any excess. And there we go, and that's repaired that particularly bad little uh, little spine issue. So I think what we'll do, we'll give those We'll give those three a brush while we're here to get them done. So the bottoms, they were all a bit grubby, weren't they, really? Not the best of copies, but I don't know. I may have had them for years, you know. <laughs> but they're okay, and they're, uh, they're now repaired. And that's the tops cleaned So we're about halfway through, a little over halfway. So I will pause there. I'm gonna thank my Patreon supporters and on my other channel, my uh, YouTube channel memberships. Right then, so we got penguin number 88, the green lacquer pavilion. On the face of it, nice, nice copy, but it's got very, very dark page edge browning. But on the whole, it's a nice copy. So uh, it's just gonna be that top edge is gonna need a dust off in a minute. Couple of crime titles there now, number 89. This is another quite common early crime title, you know. Nothing stopping it being 
excellent there. Lovely documents in there, lovely, just great crime. And we got one more here, Richard Caverne, the Sandfield Scandal. And these are actually, uh, you know, pretty nice copies of these. They haven't, they haven't got any sort of markings inside. Let's do one more, which is a real classic. M.R. James, Dr. M.R. James, Ghost Stories of an Antiquary. A classic little, uh, classic little ghost story anthology. Never read it. It's very, very good. The Penguin edition from 1937. And all of those are okay. They don't need any sort of repair work. They just need um, a brushing of the page edges. So let's do this one first. Bombs. Wow. <laughs> There's a plume coming off there. <laughs> I think it's just, this bottom one here is particularly bad. I don't think it's ever been done, ever. So it'll be interesting to see how clean that, that top book gets. definitely lightning you can sort of see it in front of your eyes you can see it's getting lighter as we've taken off a layer of dust and dirt and grime wow we so that sort of half has been done and that hasn't I don't know how much of that we're going to be able to get off but we'll keep trying there. Wow, we That particular book really had it bad, didn't it? And what a difference it's made. Well, I'm impressed. <laughs> That's that's really made quite quite the difference to that one. Because that top edge was literally appalling, wasn't it? Yes, it's much better now. It's not perfect, but it's better. <laughs> So, 88, 89, 90, and 91. So slip them up there like that. And we've got just the one more stack to do today. And we've got them up to number 109. So this is 92. The Hamptonshire Wonder. J.D. Beresford. old uh, French stamp on it, Bibliothèque Capucines, Laurent, wherever that was. So that looks like it's been in a, a French library at some point. That's cool, isn't it? So we're 1937 now, so the war is, uh, well, the first signs of war are already with us, and uh, things are start to go very much international. Now looking at this one, straight off it's a nice copy once again i think this is an upgrade that i've got but um, we need to get that top bit sorted out so i'm going to glue that down right now before i do this top edge here so these are just the sorts of things that i wanted to do to my vintage penguins I can afford to be quite generous because there's, once again, it's got each like binding. There's like a little trench in between each 
block of binding. I need to sort of get the glue all the way in there, really. Else it's just going to be, you know, just not, not look that good. I want it to be sort of flush to the book, the cover to be flush to the book. Okay, I think that's all right. So now then let's... A bit of excess. You've seen that's much better now, isn't it? It's really sort of squished in there, which is what was wanted because it's you know, very much has been caught, and that's going to preserve that one and get it looking a bit better on the shelf as well. I want my wild strawberries looking as good as possible. <laughs> there we are. Nice, fairly simple fix, that one. 94 then, Saturday night at the Greyhound. I wonder what the Greyhound was. Was it Greyhound Racing? I don't know. This is a famous one, The Man Who Was Thursday, GK Chesterton. Famous for the Father Brown books. That one's got a little name inside, but nothing we can actually do with that one. There we are. So that's those four, so four fairly plain fiction titles. None of them really that bad condition, so that's good news. Obviously, it's the, the top edges that require the most work, as usual. See if we can lighten these boys up again. Yeah, they're looking a lot better. That one there was the bad one, wasn't it? These are all right now. Looking much, much better. Yeah, that's all right. So it was 92, 93, 94, 95. What a mess. You wouldn't believe the debris that gets made when I do one of these videos, I'm telling you. Okay then, so we got number 96 here. Selected modern short stories. And there'll be a couple of names there you might recognize. Don't think this one's too bad. Yeah, no, he's all right. Just a very, very dark top on it. This one's on my list of ones to upgrade because it's just so grubby. On reflection, I mean, uh, it's just like it's obviously got damp at some point and then got dried out and it's caused it to get really, really foxed. And compared to a lot of the ones that we've seen, you know, it really does stand out, doesn't it? 98 is The Murders in Prade Street, John Road. So John Road wrote a lot for the Collins Crime Club. And uh, although I've never read him, I hear good things about him, shall we say. So that was up to number 98. So we're going to do those on their own. Um, none of them need actual repair work. It's just going to be doing the uh, bottom edges here. Hmm. Quite a lot of dust seemingly coming off that. Loads coming off there. Loads. You can always see it pumping off. Yeah, 
it's made a huge difference to that particular one, 12 stories. What a difference that's made to that one. Wow. Now, uh, the reason I did just those three is because the next one are three on their own. So we've got Penguins 99 and 100, and um, they celebrated that with uh, the worst journey in the world. This was uh, about Scott of the Antarctic's trip to the, uh, is it the South Pole. Scott's last expedition. Yes. So they did released it yeah, to the South Pole and they released it as uh, Penguins 99 and 100. And they, they come together as a pair, those two. So very, very dusty tops again, but the sides should be okay. And I think maybe it was such a journey, that's why it was given the, the honour of being penguin number 100. Uh, what a difference this is going to make, hopefully, on these. This is a pair that I've had in my possession since a, a long, long time, since I've been collecting penguins. So I've had these for you know decades, but I've never ever cleaned them. So they certainly seem to be lightening up compared to how they were. Yeah, it's making quite a difference. They're much lighter, look at that, much lighter than they were. Not perfect, but still very, very nice in comparison to the mess that they were in. So, that was 99 and 100, and I have got, Penguin did publish a one volume edition a little bit later on in a dust wrapper, and it was both the books put into one. Um, cost two, two shillings and sixpence. So underneath, you can see it's a lovely copy of this. So when did this uh, one volume one come out in? I'm guessing in the 50s, but 1948, a double volume. And you can see it's got the two penguins on the front there. Penguin double volume. And what's this in that in the back? That's a little ticket. Oriston and Turn Chapel. So this is a little ticket. This would have been local then, because they're uh, in Plymstock, which is quite near where I live in Plymouth. So I shall slip that back in because I love little things like that in a little association um, with the book's history. That's nice that. So that shows this was a local one. Which is lovely. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Let's do the top edge tonight. I'm just going to use the toothbrush on here. It's not too bad, that one. It's a much more modern vintage, shall we say. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So, just a handful left to go. Here's our last crime title. It's another Raffles. This is the follow-up, Mr. Justice Raffles. He was the gentleman burglar, and they're just great, these. So, um, if you get a chance to listen to the BBC adaptions of the Raffles stories, they are absolutely superb. Sort of set around the time of Sherlock Holmes, uh, Victorian England, as it were. But he would be almost like a, a Robin Hood, a modern-day Robin Hood. That's probably the best way to describe it. Look at that dark cover. Hopefully we'll be able to get some business on that. And that's another one. Look at that. It's almost black. But the book itself is, is okay. So two particularly dark covers. And this third one here, Barchmas, this one doesn't seem too bad. What's this inside? That's weird, isn't it? Like a bit of um, glued paper there. Bartimus wrote naval stories. Okay. I think we can have one more. WW Jacob Deep Waters 104. So none of these books have got any sort of spine issues. It is literally just um, just the top edges that uh, need it. Particularly those top two. But let's do the bottom edges and sides first. These don't need a lot. But 
at this top edge here. Wow, so I wonder if this brush is going to make much of an impact. I'm sure it will. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Lovely. Yeah, made quite an impact that. Now, there is a tiny little gap on Mr. Justice Raffles. But it's dead flat. So, it's just a hair of glue I'm going to slip in there. Just a slither. Just a slither. And this should make it it will just push this cover, this bit of the spine back in, if I can slide it in carefully enough. There we go, in it goes. Yeah, just a little bit. That should be fine. Squeeze that down. Boom. There we are. So, that was 101. 102, 103, and 104. The last little batch to do now. So this is 105, Man Trap, Sinclair Lewis. This was also an early pan book. It was a penguin first, then it became a pan. 1937. The pan cover is slightly more exciting. 106, a tatty old copy of that actually. Now East, now West. Susan Ertz. It's also a title borrowed by Salman Rushdie, East, East, comma, West. A brilliant little sh short story collection. Now the next one's in a dust wrapper, so we'll get rid of these two as is. Sinclair Lewis, it's another one with a, it has been glued down, it just needs another little layer on that, that very top edge there. To be honest, this has actually got spine missing, so I can't perform miracles, but I can just pop a little bit of glue in there, just to fold that bit down and stop it catching. But I can't replace or repair what's not there to begin with. All right, private worlds then, Phyllis Bottom, Phyllis's Bottom. <laughs> this is another one in a wrapper. Underneath, look at that, lovely, bright and vibrant. That's how we love them. Very, very nice. Immaculate, in fact. So I'm gonna brush that one on its own before I put it back in. To the wrapper, which admittedly is not perfect. You see here it's got sort of folded over. And I want to sort of just tease that back like that. There we are. But I mean, in the middle there is actually missing parts of the title. So, you know, once again, I can't. I don't have those to work with, so I'm not going to be able to do anything with that at all. Oh, there she is. Look at that. <laughs> it's just another time, isn't it? This The late 1930s. Wow. Incredible, isn't it? It is amazing to think this is like a little time capsule of um, popular fiction from 80 years ago. Right, last couple. So we've got Kai Lung un unrolls his mat. This is apparently a bit of a classic, you know. One I've read. A little bit's falling out of there. 
yeah that one's all right and then we got the fiddler sarah gertrude millen it's got a very dark top on it little book set stamp there and from bradford 1937 lovely so give these last three a brush so I hope you've enjoyed going through this little batch of vintage penguins from 80 years ago the next original video I've got is um, going to be finishing off my second half of my digit books from the 1960s um, the first video of that has done exceptionally well um, I think YouTube recommended it out quite heavily which is fantastic so um hopefully the same will happen this time around because it's uh, some brilliant books in there so if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please, please subscribe if you're not already. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers, which is my target. I'll be very, very pleased when that happens. I'll stop begging then, okay? I promise. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching today. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.